You're listening to Floy Insider, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs who want a fresh perspective on business, communication, and art. Hi, good morning. How are you guys? Great. Doing great. We're yeah. doing great. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I've already like done my whole day. I'm like ready for bed, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you. Um, definitely. And my first question to you guys is how often do you get the Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston joke? Oh my goodness. All, All the time. time. Yeah. yeah. And oft often too, people somehow combine our names and they call Brad Ben. That yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. So when we, we rebranded a while ago and we're searching yeah. for our domain and we were so surprised to be able to get it, not, not just to get the d domain, but to get the Instagram handle as well. Yeah. Uh, because we thought we'd be battling, you know, the, the <laughs> Brad and Jen saga for so long. Yeah. Like the Brad and Jen fan pages on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. How long ago did you get the domain and the Instagram handle? Because that... Five, five years ago, yeah, 2015 or 2016. Yeah, just like an overall like studio okay. name a while back, and and just rebranded to to our names. But we yeah. did have to like buy it from a private uh, we had to owner. Pay more than the average yeah. uh, domain name. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's a good thing they broke up and you got the name. So. <laughs> No issues there. Brett and Jen, it's so nice to talk to you today. Um, for everyone that's like listening and doesn't know you guys, um, could you give us an introduction? Where are you from? Where do you live now? How did you become wedding photographers? How did you guys meet? Give us a love story as well, because everyone loves a love story. Cool. Go for it. Yeah, you that. Um, so obviously we're Brad and Jen. We are based in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we've got two little boys who are awesome and young and sweet. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess I'll, I'll start with how we met and you can talk about how we got into photography. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so Brad and I met in college. We were both at Belmont University and it was, um, kind of our last semester there. And so we were in a philosophy of film class, um, which the entire course, you know, we would kind of watch these films. And then the second half of the class, we were having these deep discussions about what is, um, what is your definition of the good life through the lenses of these movies that we're watching. And so we got to know people on a pretty deep and intimate level really quickly because mm -hmm. you're kind of unearthing their values and their belief systems and um, the ways mm -hmm. they process things, which I think was just a great foundation for that. Um, we always kind of joke that we fell in love over a bag of popcorn because Brad, Brad made a comment to me one week, of course, had a massive crush on him. And he said, hey, I think it's your turn to bring popcorn next week. So the next week I remembered and I showed up with two individual bags of popcorn, one for him and one for me. And he was kind of like, OK, mm -hmm. that's I see what you're doing there. And from there, we just started hanging out more and um, started dating. But we found out afterward, actually. The class that we met in, that professor, unknown to us, was known on campus for couples meeting in his class and getting married because of <laughs> how intentional he was and how um, just the conversations got taken to such a deeper level, like so right off the bat. So we were, I think, either the seventh or eighth couple mm -hmm. that met in his class. And got wow, married. that is a yeah. high success. Did you invite him to your wedding? <laughs> we, we, we did couldn't. not well i'm like we should have yeah i don't think he ever knew and who knows yeah, maybe, maybe he saw our interested eyes across the, <laughs> across the classroom Amazing. yeah so it's pretty fun yeah so from there uh you know belmont is in nashville um i i originally am from michigan um i've been down here 14 years at this point now um uh and so we had we had graduated and you know, part of our hobby of spending time together was just making photos. I had taken a, a film, you know, photography film class at Belmont as an extracurricular, um, just like building credits. And, you know, Belmont being a liberal arts school, there were so many people that needed a headshot, band photos, um, you know, w whatever the case was. And we started becoming known around campus as, you know, Brad and Jen with cameras. And even after we graduated, people were still kind of calling us. and at the time, we thought, wow, how fun would it be to be commercial photographers? And I had done some assisting for um, 
a local commercial photographer here and we kind of had this vision what it, what would it look like to build a business together and at this point we weren't even engaged we were just dating <laughs> and we're talking about building a, a business together and making dollars yes. and all, all of this i and think our friends thought we were crazy yeah <laughs> we might have been um, well, and of course out, no, it yeah, did work it out yeah uh like many stories go you know we, we get a phone call from an old friend of mine in michigan who's getting married and wants us to shoot their wedding and we're like oh my goodness or you know we can't shoot a wedding let's we're we're above this um we want to go down a different path uh and and also it's kind of scary because it's an mm -hmm. unrepeatable event you know or this person's yeah. trusting us to document mm -hmm. this day and at that point we had no idea what we were doing we'd never we'd hardly even been to weddings ourselves um let alone mm -hmm. document anyone so Mm -hmm. So long story short is we shoot this wedding, we decided to take it on, and we got to see how quickly, um, how well we worked together. I mean, we were communi communicating yeah. across the aisles about w what was about to happen, uh, where we needed to be and when, and we realized that, gosh, this thing that we have, this relationship that we love and that we see longevity in, we're celebrating this with another couple and being a part of their celebration and capturing these um just crazy moments that uh, we're experiencing ourselves, how much we love one another, how excited we are to spend a lifetime together. And the rest really is history. We um, were able to, you know, share that wedding. And, um, you know, now 11 years later, uh, we have, we've been wedding photographers. Um, yeah. And, you know, kind of, we were both working full time at the time. And so over the course of that season, it was like, okay, maybe, maybe this could be what we do full time. Maybe there is yeah. potential in this. Cause I think that idea was always intriguing to us, but it always felt like, is this possible? Like, can we pay mm -hmm. our bills and be photographers? Um, <laughs> and I think that it just became more and more apparent. So we started like leaving jobs, moving to part time, and then eventually um, transitioned to full time. And we've been doing that like, for what, not nine years, eight years, something like that full time. So yeah. it feels so long ago that I can't even remember, but um, yeah, it's been really great. Beautiful. I'm curious to know how doing wedding photography specifically together has influenced and changed your relationship. Sorry, I'm going like personal here, but it's just, I'm really curious about it because of what you just said, Brad, how like, you know, documenting other people's love and being in love yourself, like how has that changed or impacted your relationship? Hmm. I, I instantly just think of, uh, I feel like it has given us such a sober reality on what, um, like the importance of that day and the importance of community around you. You know, you see these days mm -hmm. where you've got dads giving speeches about seeing their babies when they were young. And now we have babies and we're seeing things through their eyes. Or yeah. um, you just see those, those moments that happen between people and knowing that like, this life is so precious and this thing that we get to share together is amazing. And I think every single time, especially during like the ceremony portion, there are, there are many times where, you know, whether it's a officiant or a pastor or whoever it is, will say something in their like marriage speech um, that is just something that we needed to hear. Or like, it's another tool in our tool belt to understand how to love one another better. Like I, I specifically remember when we shot Nashville probably like five years ago and the officiant was kind of giving us advice of when you hit those hard seasons in your marriage and you have these, um, those days where it's just, it's tough when you're in an argument or things just feel off, um, not to let that create more division. But his suggestion was like to simply stick your baby toe out toward one another, like take that first tiny initial step. And that has stuck with me over the course of our marriage, since I heard that, like when we're in difficult conversations, just going, I don't want this like external circumstance to create more division, to um, distance us in a way that is unnecessary. And so that is like always in the back of my mind when those times come up of like, okay, I'm just, how can I like stick my baby toe toward him right now? Mm. How can I love him in a different way, put myself aside. Um, so I've, I think we've learned a lot of marriage advice from yeah. going to these weddings, honestly. And just being reminded of the promises that we've made to one another. I think there's a reason that we all love weddings, even as guests. You know, you get to witness love in front of um, 
being, being displayed in front of you. And for us who, who do that 20 plus times a year, we get to be reminded that, oh my goodness, you know, it's, it's been 10 years since our, our wedding, but these are the promises that we've made to one another. And it's just good to be reminded that this is, um, you know, we have no intentions of, of ever ending anything, but this is a lifelong commitment and it's serious and it's holy and being able to be reminded of that uh, many times a year is, is awesome. I, I have another story real quick. I remember a couple of years ago, yeah. one of the officiants um, had uh, officiated a wedding and, you know, had this incredible message. And I, I walked up to him after the, mm. after the ceremony and I just, you know, commented on, on how incredibly meaningful what he said to the couple was. And his only words were, let it affect you. Not thank you, mm-hmm. not, oh my goodness, uh-huh. that's words, whatever, just let it affect you. And then he walked away. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, <laughs> it is, it's one thing to, to hear something and, and to feel it, but it's another thing to actually let it change your life and yeah. your life and uh, being able to, to mm-hmm. witness moments like that over and over again and, and see the ways that it impacts our life is a gift. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so your website is really cool when you, when you get on, on it, like you go on it and it says the first thing you see is wedding photography, but different, (laughs) which I love. So what makes the difference? Why is your wedding photography? Why are you different? Yeah. You want to take this one or you want me to? You can start. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I think that we, so we, we've been through a lot together over the last 10 years and we, um, have, it, it took us a while to understand our voice as photographers. And, you know, we were building a marriage and building a relationship in the midst of growing our business. And at, at first, when we, when we were first starting out, we were trying to understand what it is that we wanted to offer to couples who were getting married. And it, it took a while to understand what that voice was, who we were as people. And uh, of course, at the time, there were incredible photographers who were changing the industry 10, 11 years ago. And we were scratching our heads thinking, this is incredible. Let's you know look, look at what this person is doing. Look at what that, that person's doing. Do we... Um, do we want to tailor ourselves towards this person or do we want to be moody? Do we want to be uh, light and airy? And I think yeah. we started recognizing that it wasn't our job to start looking at the industry as a whole and, and copying someone else's style, but to really understand who we were. And for Jen and I, that required us diving into not who we were as wedding photographers, but who we were as people. And yeah, what were our values? Why did we believe in marriage? Why are we even wedding photographers? What is this thing that we're pursuing and what kind of life is it giving us and why is that so important to us? And I think once we started to understand what our values were, that we, um, we really believe in community. We really believe that, like, like Jen said earlier, that this life is precious and it's short and it goes by so quickly um, that we could kind of see this um, all the things that we believed in and that we valued in our life were exemplified in a wedding day. We get to hear family members speak to one another. We could see these incredible moments blossom before us uh, with, you know, a father and, a, and an aunt or a father, um, or I'm sorry, a daughter and an aunt and a daughter and a, a grandfather whom she might never see again. Right. And so we were starting to have these conversations and understand that what we wanted to photograph and and what we wanted to how we wanted to serve our couples was to um, highlight the fact that these weddings are precious that um, we wanted to know who who these people were that were in front of our cameras and what story um, that was being woven in their lives so that we could show up on a wedding day understand who the most important people are understand their personalities Mm -hmm. and really honor them by capturing those people uh, in the the moments Mm -hmm. that um were important to them and, and how they expressed it as, you know, unique individuals. Yeah. Sorry, that was really long-winded. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, too, um, you know, I, I think I, I say this to people all the time. I'm like, I genuinely believe that we could shoot at the same exact venue every weekend and the bride wear the same dress and the flowers be the same. Like, if all the externals were the same, mm-hmm. 
I feel like because we are trying so hard to establish a connection with our couple and understand who they are from like a core level, I, I believe that those images would be entirely different. Like there are different emotions, different hearts on display, different interactions between family members, um, different weather that, you know, all, all of these things that come into play that um, I think we try our best every day before we go to a wedding to remind ourselves to be really awake and aware of like who they are, what this day has for us and telling that in as truthful of a way as possible where, you know, we're, we're really letting things unfold very naturally. And um, honestly, just trying to give them images that, you know, if, if someone can't attend their wedding or if they have kids down the road, like we want to give them images that, if someone wasn't able to be there, they would know what it felt like to be there. And so I think a lot of that comes in, not just posing them in pretty light, not just telling them to stand here and smile, um, but to be very uh, cognizant of what this day is and then be watching for those moments, watching for those like glances that happen. And those, you're like, okay, something's brewing. Mama's about to cry. Like I'm going to position myself in this part of the room so that I'm able to capture that because I can see something is stirring. Um, and so I think just, Mm-hmm. Yeah, trying to be awake to like who the humans are in front of us, mm-hmm. I think is what I would say makes us different in that way. And looking at your images, they one thing that I felt while looking at them was they feel very alive. Mm-hmm. Um, and like all the documentary shots just feel very alive, like you're in the middle of it, um, like in in the action. And I love what you just said about when you start off and I think that's great advice for photographers who are starting or maybe are even in the middle of a change and feel lost to not think about well what kind of photographer do I want to be or what kind of photos do I want to take but actually who am I Mm -hmm. um, and what matters to me because it's one thing like trying to recreate someone's style or like how do these people shoot how can I shoot the same way or how can I edit the same way how can I get the same clients but it's a whole other thing to go from the foundation from like yourself what what matters to you what are your values um, and build your creation on that that is so much more sustainable and also honest so I am um, I love that very much um, and I'm I'm all for that. I think that's such great advice for people starting out, um, especially in this saturated industry. I think it's fulfilling too, right? So if like you build a business, the the idea of someone else's vision or someone else's work or style, Mm -hmm. right, right. Then there's always going to be this, this thing inside of you that wants out. And you'll understand or you won't understand what that is until you take the time to to ask the questions and to understand who you are and, and then allow yourself the freedom and, the, and really the courage to express that uh, in a unique way, which I think adds to, you know, not just sustainability as a unique artist, but fulfillment. Mm, that's so true. I realized also another thing I realized while looking at your website was that you are you're famous like you. I mean, I. I'm sure you are famous, but also you're like Pinterest famous. I know one of your photos very, very well. (laughs) Because like it's it's all over Pinterest. Maybe you know which one I mean. Or maybe you have loads of Pinterest uh, famous images. But it's it's from the ceremony, Uh um, I believe. It's like the really close up of bride and groom like profiles and she's crying. That one. I was like... I know this shot. I'm pretty sure I pinned it. I'm pretty sure um, former clients of mine have pinned it and showed it to me. And they went like, we want this. And I'm like, well, (laughs) (laughs) it's not, I I cannot make you cry. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. you have to do that. (laughs) That's so funny. It's weird to hear you. uh, Yeah call us famous but yes I know the image you're referring to and that is definitely I think there's that is that speaks so much to the uh just the idea of like it being a collaborative thing and like we like you said hey I can't make you cry on a wedding day it's like they were there fully as themselves and felt permission to not have to hide the tears and not have to um 
hold back the joy that they were experiencing. And I feel like that is such like we want to give that that gift to our couples on their wedding day where they feel like they do have the freedom to be themselves, to express their emotions, whatever that looks like, and um, to just be really in the moment. And so, yeah, I, I love that image myself. Um, and they're a very, very sweet and wonderful couple. So It's a gorgeous image. Absolutely. And I'd, I'd love to know how do you create those relationships? Um, because everything you share online and um, from your work and it it's it it comes across very relational, right? And very like um, you're like very connected to your clients and 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 in the way you speak and in the way you shoot. How do you how do you create that connection with them? Is it in the way? I'm sure like in the way you present yourself, but then also beyond that, when you start the actual real life connection mm -hmm. with them, what happens then? It's a great question. Um, I, I feel like my, my gut response to that is we like, yes, obviously we are photographers. Like that is why we are there on a wedding day. That is why people are inquiring on our site. Um, But I think that we, the part of our job that we love more, or maybe just as much, I should say, uh, is I think just showing up as humans who are helping guide them in this experience of what it feels like to be on a wedding day. We have been in those, in those roles ourselves um, 10 years ago and know like the flurry of emotions that exist. We know Um, you know, that yes, there can be stressful moments in planning and here were the things that were stressful for us. And how can we um, put ourselves back in their shoes and try to encourage them along the way? How can we try to slow them down and remind them of, you know, hey, if you're doing a first look like this, this is about to be a moment that you're going to remember. How can we just encourage them in that um, and that continue throughout the day? I think The, like yeah. backing up and thinking about as people come to our site, as they come, um, you know, into our inquiry inbox, I think so much of that uh, relational interaction starts right from the get go. And so calling them, getting on the phone, mm -hmm. hearing their story, hearing their hearts, what's important to them, I think is a massive piece of the process for us and wanting to make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're, all on the same page in terms of like expectations for the photos themselves, mm -hmm. but also just genuinely getting to yeah. hear who they are and knowing those pieces of their story that make them unique. And then, you know, throughout the way, like asking questions, um, helping, you know, educate along the way in terms of here are things that will set you up for success so that your day can be stress-free so that you can be present. So trying to just continue to, um, I guess, guide them in some way, you know, throughout the process. And then I think, you know, on, on the wedding day, like we never want it to feel like, oh, hey, the photographers are here. You know, we want it to be like, hey, Brad and Jen are here and they happen to have cameras with them. Great. And so just finding like, what are the ways that we can interact with them before the wedding day? How can we make them feel loved and seen? Mm -hmm. um, how can we know more pieces of their story before we show up so that we can serve them well? And then obviously the day of just like, encouraging them, being excited, um, and like I said, reminding them of, of what that day is about. Yeah. I, I can't remember who shared this uh, sentiment with us, but, um, you know, keeping the main thing the main thing, right? Like Weddings okay. are amazing celebrations, and they are, are made to be beautiful, and we appreciate a great floral arrangement. But at the end of the day, the dress, no matter how beautiful, the flowers, no matter how beautiful, will, will wilt or get, get hung up. And there will be a relationship and a marriage and a story that is still forming and blossoming. And they'll be able to look back on this day and either remember, you know, how stressful the guest count was or managing family expectations or... Um, you know, all, all of the decisions that come along with a wedding day that, that most couples have never, ever had to make decisions on before. So if we can be that small reminder throughout the entire wedding process of, hey, you're getting married. Let's just remember throughout this whole thing that that is what's most important. 
and all these decisions that you're trying to make, let's make sure that they give back to an experience that you are going to be present on your wedding day and not worried about anything else. And I think having those conversations with our couples builds trust and rapport between us. And so that by the time we get to a wedding day, there are are a lot of times where, you know, we're not really showing our faces. If If a couple doesn't do an engagement session or we don't do a FaceTime, we will meet some of our couples on, um, on their wedding day. And it's just so encouraging when we show up and they're hugging us and saying, we're so happy you're here because it, it allows us to know that we did our job well. Mm-hmm. And we and can mom is even saying, Oh my yeah. gosh, I've heard so much about you. Like right. they're so excited. You're here today. Oh. Yeah. So I know that's a, that's, you know, kind of a long answer and not, not, uh, we're not the only photographers that that's important to, but, um, you know, just, just finding ways to serve our couples mm-hmm. and keep the main thing, the main thing. I love long answers, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, do you think that that is something that some photographers overlook, like keeping the main thing, the main thing? Um, do you think that some, or what are, I know that you coach other photographers as well, and you mentor other photographers. From your experience and observation, what are the things that tend to be overlooked when creating that client experience, when caring for your clients? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, going back to what we said before, so many couples that are coming across our, our site and inquiring about wedding photography have never planned a wedding before. And I think it's easy to get excited and be like, oh my gosh, this couple sounds amazing. Look at where they're getting married and instantly go internal, right? As the photographer. I cannot wait to show up. I can't wait to, to pose them in this way. I wonder what dress she's wearing. Uh, I wonder. I can't wait to share these on this venue. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to submit this blog. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be the front page of my website. My, my, my. Right. Um, and it's really, it's really, e- <laughs> can be really easy, especially when we're excited about the people that we're working with, to um, solely think about ourselves in that process because we still are building a business and we still mm. are excited about making images. But remembering to reverse that yeah. and and uh, be reminded that. Mm our images will only be as good as we're serving this couple. So if we think about the couple before ourselves and think, how can we serve these two unique humans who are incredibly in love and excited about getting married and not thinking about any publications or, um, you know, ceremonies and perfect lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, Celebrating them, allowing them to feel known and allowing, giving them chances to, to trust us as not just photographers, but guides to their wedding day, I think is a huge opportunity uh, for photographers to lean in with other people, build rapport, and ultimately what yields incredible images, right? Because if they're, if they're stiffed up and worried about all these things that don't matter on a wedding day, then they're not going to look natural. They're not going to look alive in the photos. And those are things that we strive for. Yeah. I think a, a big thing that we see pretty frequently in um, just mentoring other photographers is there's, you know, sometimes people will have a little bit of like, okay, I'm going to send them a welcome gift and um, maybe I'll have a questionnaire that I send them at some point. But I think a lot of times it's kind of like mm-hmm. photographers will book a couple and they're all excited and there's all this hype like right around the time of booking. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as like that, that is, that is checked off. Um, then they kind of just go on the back burner until it's like, okay, two weeks before the wedding, the planner sent me the timeline, so I should probably reach out. And, you know, that's, that's something that as, as we mentor people, you know, we ask pretty um, detailed questions about their processes and their business. And I think that is a reoccurring theme that we've seen. And so encouraging people, like, it is hard to be on the other side of the camera. It is it is, you know, a vulnerable space to have someone documenting not only you, but like this very intimate day in your lives. And so um, honoring the yeah. fact that you've like you've been given this position of being mm-hmm. there in this very intimate space with them and doing your best to um, just nurture that relationship throughout the process, whether that is helping educate them on things throughout the way, whether that's answering questions before they have them. Um, or whether that's just like connecting and letting them know that you're thinking about them. I think those things go such a long way mm-hmm. in building this like overall experience where you're not just showing up as the photographer. You're not, you know, just um, another vendor on a 
a checklist. It is a relationship. They are walking in, knowing who you are, excited that you are there, and they felt loved and cared for you all throughout the way. So it's like the wedding day is just like this cherry on top, you know? It's like, cool, now we get to hang out in person, but all along the way, I've felt known and seen by you. Um, and so I think that if I would say something that I think people overlook, I think that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a huge one. one. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. How do you answer questions before someone has them? <laughs> what does that look like i'm curious well you know having 10 years of experience under our belt we've been able to look back and see patterns of concern from our couples right like here you know we're we're 10 6 10 12 months out from from a wedding when do those those questions typically arise and you know answering those questions and the timing of those is different based on how how long we have until a wedding but I think a huge thing for, for us is, right. is setting expectations on the front end. Hey, these, these are things that we'll be talking about along the way. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. this, you know, uh, answer yet, but this question will be coming. And, you know, there are some brides that want to know answers uh, or, or have questions before we're able to get to them. And that's totally fine. Um, some people who are a little bit more like plan oriented, right? But being able to um, tweak and build a workflow that that we can um, lay out before us and say, all right, here, you know, we have guides as it relates to an engagement session or your wedding day or choosing specific vendors. And those things come at, at certain times in the, in, the, in the process. And we want to stay ahead of those questions as experts in our industry and as guides to the wedding, their wedding day. Yeah. So like, for example, just trying to give like a very tangible uh, example of that, like, we know that when they book us as a photographer, they're typically in the beginning stages of planning. So that is the time where we want to be talking about, hey, here are vendor recommendations. If you need help, reach out. Like there are plenty of people that we love to work with that we're you know happy to give our two cents on. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than that coming later in the process, at which point they've probably already done most of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, or like another really tangible one that I think mm-hmm. of is uh and I think this came as a byproduct of like we kept getting the same question over and over and we were like, okay, how can we do a better job of like serving and educating people? And so after the wedding, the number one question was always, so when do I get to see my images? And so now that, that translated yeah. into a, okay, let's answer their question before they ask it. So they see it in the pricing guide, they see it in their contract, which those were always in, in existence, mm-hmm. but usually there's such a large gap of time that people have forgotten. Like they're not going back to their contract and going, okay, wait, when do I get my photos again? And so after the, the wedding happens, typically like the Monday after the wedding, um, we are sending them an email. Here's what you can expect next. Here's when you will receive your images. Here's how you can access your gallery. Um, here's what you need to be, uh, here's what you need to know about your heirlooms, like your albums and your print boxes. And so trying to find the areas where, honestly, I think most of those things have come from um, just recognizing that like we were getting the same question over and over again, or we didn't serve someone well. And so it was like taking the circumstance that could have been seen as uh, like a failure and going, okay, how do we make this an opportunity to serve and love our couples better? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that, if that helps put a little meat to the bones of typical things. But. That's great. Thank you so much. That's really great. Um, and it does make everyone's life easier, your clients' lives and your own as well. If you don't, if you have something, something in place, a system in place that you don't have to like um, just do from scratch yeah. every mm-hmm. time someone asks. So it is definitely an easier experience for everyone. Um, but we all know those clients. <laughs> I used to be a wedding photographer <laughs> and we all know those clients who it's written everywhere, you know, it's in the contract, it's in the pricing sheet, it's everywhere, but they just ask because they don't read those things. They just don't read. Um, have you ever like, you know, contract aside or, or that, that specific thing aside, but have you ever had clients that were unhappy um, for whatever reason and not satisfied? I mean, I find it hard to believe looking at <laughs> your body of work. Has that ever happened and how, how do you deal with that? Let's get let's get into the sure. difficult things. <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't um, had anyone upset, you know, a- after the fact. I think that there have been moments along the way where we maybe could have done a better job at setting expectations, mm-hmm. which I think 
really comes down to, you know, what, what an unhappy customer comes down to. Um, unmet expectations. Unmet expectations. Yeah. So, um, you know, yeah. a, a huge thing that I think is important to us is, is making sure that we're listening and that we're doing a good job of continuing to know who our clients are, um, what their disappointment is and, and owning our mistakes. You know, I just, just last week we had a, a miscommunication with, uh, with an engagement session with one of our associates and we recognized that we dropped the ball on something that we should have stepped up to. And our, our bride, while she didn't necessarily mm -hmm. communicate that she was frustrated, we were like, you know what, we need to, to take an extra step forward and make sure that we're serving her really well. So we're going to actually rush to deliver this engagement session uh, and surprise her with this because, you know, we should have, we should have done something a little different last week that we didn't, you know, we didn't take responsibility for, or we did take responsibility for it and, and chose to, lost in right. Communication. right. So yeah, I think, I think, you know, setting expectations, understanding our clients' expectations and making sure that we're doing a good job at, at listening and, and allowing them space to feel known and heard. Yeah. And I, I think in that, as I um, am just trying to process, like when are times that people have maybe been like confused or upset? I think a lot of times uh, people can get really confused about well, I get the images, but my parent, like everyone else doesn't have access to them. How does that work? And so trying to do a better job of explaining that, but then also, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think on the back end, trying to listen really empathetically without getting defensive, mm -hmm. without just immediately um, laying down the law so that they feel known and heard and then kind of like re-communicating that yeah. in as kind of a way as possible. Yeah. Here's, you know, what this looks like. Um, and I think that honestly, that's always been like any, any potential, like, uh, mishap has always been diffused in that way because mm -hmm. there's humans engaging in that point. I think email, like I would not <laughs> advise anyone handle any disagreements like this in an email. Cause I think there's no human interaction. There's like way too much room for error. And well, you said this and you meant it in this way. And I think being able to mm -hmm. hear tone of voice is super important. Um, and just, you know, clarifying, well, what did mm -hmm. you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Um, goes a long way. So, um, the other piece in that I think I would say is like, we always ask our couples afterward for feedback. Like, Hey, was there anything that you wish that uh, we had captured that you didn't see in your images or, you know, just asking about their experience overall. And I think that um, we haven't gotten many, you know, uh, can you just, what do you call it? Is there one word? Constructive criticism. Um, but the times that we have, it's been incredibly helpful for us seeing things more and more through the ones of our yeah. couples. Like there was a couple one time that um, several years ago now told us, Hey, I wish I like all of our photos are amazing, but I wish that during the speeches I had seen more photos of um, other guests rather than just like us, the people giving speeches and the parents. And we were like, Oh, of course. Like, yes, that makes sense. But you know, we were kind of focused in on those um, key players of the day, so mm -hmm. to speak. And I think giving our couples room to yeah. speak into that, just continues to help that um, evolution of serving people better and understanding, you know, what it is that we can be doing better to um, give a more well-rounded experience. That is so powerful to ask for feedback. I don't think that's something that a lot of photographers <laughs> do, though. <laughs> that is really, really because it is it is scary to ask um, for feedback on something so like personal and. Um, or like it feels personal, right? Because it's like your art, you're creating it. Yes, you're you're creating it for someone else and it's about them and their day, but it's also, um, yeah. it's just really scary. But uh, it sounds like, a, yeah. Do you like, when you when you receive those emails back, are you like <laughs> sweating? Like, I feel like I cover my eyes a little bit. Like, is it, let me see if it's good. And then <laughs> I can take a deep breath and know. But I also know that those emails have made us better photographers, right? Mm -hmm. So there is always like a little, you know, sweaty pits going on. But um, I, I think understanding that, hey, this this is continuing even after the service is done to make our clients feel known and heard. And yeah. we get to become better photographers because of their feedback. Amazing. And is that how you how you get most of your bookings like because of your clients and like how much they love you and it 
are they like your biggest fans and you get all referrals from them? How does it work for you personally? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sounds like it. Yeah, I, I think most of our referrals are, are, I don't think, I know most of our referrals are word of mouth. Yeah. Um, mm. We were recently talking about this the other day. Amazing. What if Instagram website social media didn't exist Ooh. right Ooh. how how would that change the way that we treat our couples mm -hmm. throughout the process leading up to their wedding day mm -hmm. how would that change the way we treat their family members mm -hmm. their bridal party the other vendors who are serving the couple that day mm -hmm. and it made us realize oh my goodness that is the biggest asset that we can have right of being able to be relational being able to be trusted from not just the couple but their family members the bridal party Yeah. Uh, we shot a wedding back in December and, the, and we were approached after the wedding by several bridal party members um, with showering us with compliments. We have never seen wedding photographers engage, uh, remember names, make us feel comfortable like you and Jen make have. Make it easy. Make it easy, yeah. And of course, it's like incredible, but we're also thinking that dude has a girlfriend, right? <laughs> um, the, these, these are future clients, not not just brand ambassadors, but people who, when the time comes, hopefully are going to be calling us and remembering the experience that they had either as a brother of the groom, uh, a bridal party member, or just a guest on a wedding day who saw an experience laid before them. And if, if we can, if, if we are not acting as if our social media and website presence didn't exist, then we have to do a better job on our wedding, uh, on our wedding days. Yeah. And actually the, the wedding that Brad's referring to that couple, she attended a wedding we shot seven years ago when mm. she was a teenager and told her mom, when I get married someday, I want them to shoot my wedding. Mm. And sure enough, seven years later, here we are shooting her wedding with the couple whose wedding we originally shot attending as guests. And it just wow. was a very surreal experience. We've had that happen a couple of times, but I think that's the largest gap in time that we've seen that happen and mm -hmm. i think it just it goes to show the power of like give not just giving the the couple a great experience but just like being a kind human to everybody who's at the wedding that day and mm -hmm. um yeah just mm -hmm. serving serving people well yeah that was a, a true honor yeah wow so <laughs> powerful to build those relationships um amazing thank you guys so much this was a perfect wrap up um and in a beautiful ending um to like uh yeah to to end this conversation on because it is all about relationships and photography is such a such an intimate and personal thing um that i think yeah sometimes we can especially right now living in a in an instagram world we can get so caught up in the pretty images um, that we forget what it is actually about. Um, and I love that thought of what if Instagram didn't exist? Like that's so, so amazing. So important to think about um, what you and your business would look like without it and, and your relationships. So thank you guys. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> Really, really loved um, your insight and thanks for being open and honest and just great fun to talk to. Yeah, thanks for having us. Fun it's to be been here. so fun. Great. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your lunch time. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We will. <laughs> thanks so much. Hopefully, we didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks so much. You're listening to Floy Insider, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs who want a fresh perspective on business, communication and art.